Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I have a really fun video for you guys. I am going to try and replicate some Harry Potter inspired treats. Now as someone who loves Harry Potter, I do follow a ton of Harry Potter fan accounts on Instagram and I often see videos about Harry Potter themed like birthday parties or get togethers and they always have a ton of cute Harry Potter themed treats. And of course, I thought it would be fun to try and replicate them. Now, the keyword here is try. I am not a baker. I am not a professional. I don't know what I am doing. And for the most part, I'm going to be trying to make this video as easy to follow as possible. So this is just to see how everything turns out. I hope it turns out well at the end. But if you want to see if I'm able to accomplish what I am set out to do, then keep on watching. So for my first treat, I'm going to try and make cupcakes inspired on the Hagrid birthday cake. Now for this, I'm going to use a box cake mix because I'm trying to make this easy. But if you have a favorite cake recipe that you like to use, you can do that as well. And I'm going to use my paddle attachment for this one. And here it says that we'll need one cup of water, half a cup of oil, and three eggs. I don't know if there's a specific order that you should do this in, but it doesn't matter. To me, at least it doesn't. I find that it'll taste good anyways. And let me measure out half a cup of oil. And this is vegetable oil. When baking, you do want to use vegetable oil because it doesn't have like a taste to it. And let me go get my, what is it? A cup of oil? No, a cup of water so that I can get that in there as well. Okay, so here is my cup of water and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there as well. And I'm just gonna mix that all together. I know some people say like there's some things you can do to cake mixes to make them better, like substituting one thing for another, but I don't know about the, all of that. Now I went and got my spatula so that I can clean up the edges of the bowl. Okay. So ugh. here is my mix and it doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit runny, but it's fine. Now I have my cupcake tin and I have two different liners here. I have these gold ones and like these more, I guess, paper bag ones. I thought these like fit more the theme of Hagrid. Um, so I got these. Maybe I'll do half and half. I think I'm gonna do that. I'll do six with this liner and six with the gold liner. So all my tins are lined and I wish these mixers had like a spout right here so that you could guide your mix. So let me finish filling these up and I will come right back to show you guys where I'm at. Okay, so all my liners are filled. They are pretty even. I did go ahead and pat these down on the counter so that any air bubbles would rise to the surface. I still have a little bit of batter left, but I don't think I'm gonna do anything with it because we have enough here for what we need. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these into a 350 degree oven, which has already been preheating. And while these cook, we can go ahead and start on the next treat. Okay, so cupcakes are in the oven. They have to be there for 15 minutes. I went ahead and did a little bit of cleanup. And now we're going to start on the next one. Now this one is like Howler inspired puff pastries. Now I am probably guessing that these should be made with puff pastry, <laughs> but I couldn't find any of that in my local supermarket. So I went with pie crust. I don't know if there's a lot of a difference. But if you're a professional baker or you know, let me know down below if there's a lot of difference between one and the other. I used this same pie crust when I made my pumpkin pasties and those seem to turn out well. So I don't think there's 
a big issue with it. I'm sure they're going to be delicious. Either way, I'm going to fill them with some Nutella. But you can fill them with whatever you prefer. If you want to use jam or strawberry jam, blueberry jam, pumpkin filling, whatever you like the most. So the only thing is this is round and I need to cut these into squares. So I'll figure it out. I'm going to roll this out so that it could be a little bit thinner and see if maybe that way I can get a little bit more from one round, but let's see. And while I'm there, I should also go ahead and line a baking sheet with some parchment paper. Let me go ahead and do that. I didn't think I planned accordingly, but let me go line my baking thing <laughs> with parchment paper. And that way I'll have that ready before we actually start doing this part. Okay, so I went ahead and lined my baking pan with parchment paper and I'm gonna put it to the side just so that I have everything ready to go. And I flatten this as much as I feel comfortable with. Now, let me see how I'm going to do this because I'm not following any recipe or any instructions. I think these need to be in a square shape so that we can fold them like an envelope, an envelope. Let me know down below if you say envelope or envelope. I say it either way. <laughs> so, so here's one of mine. I'm gonna cut the other edges off. Pretty much this is what I'm working with. Um, for mine, like I said, I'm going to be using Nutella or Nutella because it's delicious. Now, I don't know how much of this to put in it without it being too much where it will break, but I'm going to eyeball it. <laughs> now, I did warn in the beginning of the video that this was me trying to do these things. So it's just like a chill way to hang out and see if we can make it happen. Let me put that there. Now, see, I think an envelope is kind of like that. You fold in like the corners. I don't know if you guys could even see what I'm doing, but I'm folding all my corners and then I'm folding this corner and like that. And basically what I should have at the end is kind of like a little envelope type of situation, as you can see. Now mine is a little bit crooked because my square is definitely not perfect, but it's fine. It still works. Uh, let me try and do a couple more and we'll see how it goes. So my cupcakes are done and they smell so good. I'm gonna let them cool for a little bit in the tin on the stove and then I'm gonna pop them out and I'm gonna put them in the freezer because I don't wanna ice them hot because for sure that's gonna be a disaster. So I want them to cool down as fast as possible. So this is what I have so far. Um, I would say they don't look great. I don't think they're going to end up looking too good. This is like the best one, the first one. I don't know why, what I did with that one, but let's see how these turn out. This has to go into the oven for 10 to 12 minutes or until light brown. So let me go and crank up the oven clean up a little bit here, put these in the oven, and then I'm going to go ahead and take out the cupcakes from the tin. All right, guys, so I put the howlers in the oven. I did 
do like a slight egg wash on them before I put them in. I did put them in only for seven minutes, although the packaging said 10, because I figured it's easier to give them more time if they're not ready than to just completely burn them all together. I went ahead and got my cupcakes out of the mold. And here are the ones with the gold liner. And then here are the ones with the parchment liner. Both are really nice. I'm going to pop these into the freezer, like I said, because if I try to frost these warm, the frosting is just going to melt off and it'll be a disaster. So let me go ahead and do that and I will be back so that we can start mixing our frosting. Okay, so for my frosting, I did buy store-bought frosting because like I said, this is an easy video. But if you wanna make your own frosting, that's fine as well. However, I do find that store-bought frosting is a little bit soft when you try to use it. So I am going to be whipping this up in my mixer and I'm going to be adding a little bit more powdered sugar to it. Now this may be a little bit too much frosting, but it's fine. I have another one there because I wanna do it different colors so that we can have a little bit of a colorful surprise inside the cupcakes and we can make them into the house colors. Let me know if you know what movie this is from. I got this at Disney on our last trip. I love it. Okay, so. I'm gonna put in a little bit more sugar. This is one third of a cup of sugar. Okay, so my howlers are out of the oven. They look okay. I mean, the shape could definitely look better, but they don't look as bad as I thought they would. Now, I don't wanna to touch them too much because they're extremely soft. I do want them to get a little bit harder before I start manipulating them. Now, in the meantime, our frosting is looking very good. It is a very bright pink. Let me, whoop, this is a disaster. <laughs> okay, all right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's all well incorporated in there, that we don't have splotches of pink food coloring just hanging around. Okay, so here I have my four bowls and I have this little teeny tiny one because I have to mix up some black for the eyes of the howler. I can use the same red that I use for the inside of the cupcakes for the lips. Now for these, I'm not going to mix these up in the mixer because it's not gonna be like a lot of an amount of frosting for them, so I don't wanna do too much. Ooh, I got a little bit scared there. I thought it was going to turn out like orange, but it changed up, let me show you guys. This is the perfect color yellow. So here we have our Hufflepuff yellow. I love it, it looks so nice. Let's do our Ravenclaw blue. Oh, that is a nice blue, look at that. Here you go. That looks <laughs> so good. All right, and now we have our Slytherin green. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that because I will end up using this same green for my letters on my cupcake. Uh, so let's see. And then what else? My red. Okay, so I got my cupcakes, my fillings, my frostings, and what I'm going to do is that for each one of the cupcakes, I'm gonna open a hole in the middle, and I want to add some of the frosting. Should I have done this with a piping tip? Probably. Am I going to do it with a piping tip? No, because I don't wanna go through the trouble of putting 
that in. So we have 12 total, four colors. That means we can do three each. So these are going to be my Gryffindor cupcakes. So my cupcakes are all filled now. I did have an incident with one of them. So we have one less Hufflepuff cupcake than we have of all the rest, but for the most part, it went well. This is what they're going to look like at the end. For some of them, you'll see the filling on the top, but it doesn't matter because we are going to frost these now. Um, I want to try something out. Do I want to try something out? No, I don't want to try anything out anymore. Okay, so I'm going to frost the tops, but I'm going to try to make them as smooth as I possibly can. So you want to be generous with these because you don't want any of that frosting from the inside to poke out of these. Now, when I first thought of this idea, I didn't take in consideration how small these cupcakes were going to be. Will I be able to write everything that I need to write on them? I have no idea. Am I going to try? Yes, I am. Am I going to be successful? Probably not. But we shall see. Okay, so here are my little howlers. Now, they aren't the shape I was expecting, but we're just gonna roll with it. So I went ahead and I put some red frosting and some of the black frosting into these Ziploc bags. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and pipe on some teeny tiny little eyes right around here and you know what i'm going to try and use a toothpick to kind of draw in the shape that i'm trying to accomplish with this so now let me see how i can do this so I'm gonna try to do like a, like a that, and then kind of like fill them in. And then with another clean toothpick, kind of use it to guide my frosting where I want it to go. I never said these were gonna be professional, I made it clear in the beginning of the video that this was me trying to do this. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is such a fail. But this is what they look like so far. Oh, I don't want them to fall off the plate. Oh. Okay, so that's that. Now let me go and get the cupcakes because now it's going to be the hardest part of the cupcakes and that's writing the happy birthday Harry on them. So let me go get those and I will be right back. Okay guys, so I have a problem because it seems that the tips that I bought, which are these, don't come with the other part that you need to use them in the bag. So I'm going to have to not use this and instead I'm going to have to use the bag without the tip and hope that it works because the thing doesn't bring the other part that I need. And I also realized that I didn't have probably enough green frosting. So I mixed the rest of my yellow frosting with my blue frosting and the green frosting that I did have and I made some more green one.
look guys it doesn't look that bad actually <laughs> but oh my god it's so hard to do i would i don't think i would ever do these for a party the good thing with this is that this doesn't have to look like super neat because at the end of the day Hagrid sat on these anyways so we have happy this happy is a little bit too big okay guys so this is going to be the last thing I'm going to do for today and it is a butterbeer because what would a Harry Potter party or get together be without butterbeer now the recipe that I have here let me just start off by saying there are so many different recipes on how to make butterbeer all of them swear that they're just like universal. Um, all of them are very, very different. The one that I am going to not follow, but just look at um, is pretty basic. Although, what would a recipe of mine be if I had all the ingredients, which I don't. <laughs> um, and I'm kind of, kind of, I'm going to um, kind of modify it because this here is for two liters and for a party I can see how two liters would be necessary but this party is just me so <laughs> I don't need two liters of butterbeer so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the whipped cream now she has like a whole cup of whipping cream of heavy whipping cream and one cup of powdered sugar and half a cup of butterscotch topping. I didn't find butterscotch topping in my grocery. So I'm just going to eyeball it because I'm not making a cup of whipped cream. I don't know, a little bit of powdered sugar. And let me just say, I always mess up whipped cream uh, for some reason, I can never, I think I over beat it. Now, I don't have butterscotch topping, so I'm going to do a little bit of caramel topping and a tiny bit of butter extract. Right now, it's like. It leaves ribbons inside the thing, but not, you know something, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it because the other times that I've done this, I've gone too much. So this is what it's looking like now. So it's thick enough to where it coats my bowl. It has kind of the consistency of melted ice cream, if I have to compare it to something. So let's go ahead and put this to the side. Now, in her recipe, she says that for two liters of cream soda, she uses one fourth a teaspoon of caramel extract and one fourth of a teaspoon of butter extract. And I have my cup here from the Wizarding World. And this is just cream soda that you can get from like Walmart. The brand is IBC Cream Soda. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to put just the tiniest bit of this extract in it. I don't wanna do too much. That's too much. Okay, let me do a couple of, I think that's good enough. You could always do more but you can't do less. And I'm going to put some caramel inside and kind of stir it. The caramel and the butter extract will kind of do like that butterscotch flavor. Now, I don't know why, for some reason, I bought these yesterday and it didn't occur to me to put them in the refrigerator. And now I'm just going to go ahead and top it with my little whipped topping. And now let me clean up and we can go ahead and taste all the things that we've made today. 
Okay, so these are all the treats that I made today. Now, I am going to taste test them, but I also have my son Alex here with me so that he can taste them as well. Now, the question for you. Yes? Do you know what these are? Can you guess what they are? Howlers. Okay, so you want to taste these first? Mm. Okay, so let me show them this one first. Let's taste this first. And let me show them how these came out. And this is what they look like. I mean, they're not that bad. This one looks pretty good. I think out of all of them, Nutella. I think out of all of them, this one is the most decent <laughs> one. This one has the most boxes. Some of them are a little bit weird. Look at this one. Okay, but this, let's see what they taste like. Uh, the dish. What score would you give them? Hmm? From one to ten. Seven. A seven in general or because they're ugly? <laughs> Not because they're ugly. <laughs> If I rated them on being ugly, they would get... <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> a what? <laughs> a ten. <laughs> they would get like a five. A five? Uh, okay. But overall factor, I give it a seven. Okay. So what, which one do you want to choose from here? Because they're not all the same. In the inside, they have the, the Hogwarts house colors. Which one's Ravenclaw? I don't know which one is. They might all be the same. They might be different. Which one do you want to choose? It's so much sweet. I know. You know those would be good too. What? With pizza sauce and mozzarella cheese. Agreed. Like a those like would a, be nice. Like okay. An empanadilla. So I'm gonna. Empanadilla. You're gonna just bite yours. Is this yogurt? I got Slytherin green. What did you get? You got Ravenclaw. <laughs> okay, I'm good with Slytherin green. I'm. I always feel like my second house. My second house is either Slytherin. Oh, I didn't show them how they look in the top. Oh, mm. uh, yeah, that one. So this is how these turned out. They were easier to make than I thought. I thought it was going to be really hard to write all that on top of it, but it wasn't that bad. These are just regular chocolate cupcakes. 8.5. Like and I'm happy that Can I got Ravenclaw. The inside? Show them the inside. Yeah. Right, it's fun for like a party. Yeah, it's like a bluish color, like light blue. But like, like fun for a party. If you like have it, a party, or like a like a Harry Potter themed birthday. Exactly. And then when you open them, you get like a color inside. You want to taste? It's the it's hot because I forgot to put them in the refrigerator or something. I put a little bit of ice in there, but you want a straw? Or you want to drip like that first? Straw, because I feel like I'm gonna spill it. Are you gonna mix it? How does it taste? Was it good? Without mixed, it's a uh, thing 8.5. Yeah. Man, you're a really harsh critic. <laughs> Let me see. It's good. Does it taste like the one from the park? Yeah. Let me see. Can I try and mix it? It does taste like the one from the park. Actually. Yeah. The only thing I don't I don't love the way this makes it taste because it gives it like a little bit of a alcohol taste. <laughs> Not like yeah. a adult alcohol, but like just like an alcohol. It doesn't mix anymore. Just drink. Alright. Thank you for coming down to taste with me. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. Okay guys, this video was so much fun to make. If you guys enjoyed watching it, go ahead and give it a like. It is the easiest way to support my channel. And if you guys wanna see more of my content, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel because now in October, I have a couple of things planned. I will be getting my first Harry Potter tattoo and I plan to vlog a little bit of the experience. We are also going to go to the Forbidden Forest experience here at the end of October in Dallas. And we also have a trip planned in November for Universal Studios and the Wizarding World. So if you guys want to see vlogs and content around those things, then go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you here. And again, thank you guys so much for taking your time and hanging out with me for a little while today. I will see you in the next one.